Yeah, and it also, I mean, it also kind of produced some light ends like this. <coughs> Okay, keep going here. The next thing, the next unit is called a <coughs> hydrocracker. It's uh, I like to think of it as the. Uh, oh, here's my tape. I like to think of it as the uh, the Mercedes Benz of the units because it's expensive, and not everybody has one. Most people don't, but. Uh, but it's a really versatile, really good, good unit. It, it mostly produces. Uh, you, it also produces. Uh, takes this gas oil that uh, you know doesn't. You can't really sell, and it produces diesel. That's the main thing it produces. Is diesel. <coughs> it can do gasoline too. But actually, um, diesel sells for the most right now. It's the highest demand. Is diesel. So right now the refineries, wanting to make money, would rather make more of this from the gas oil than this. They get more for their money. So those that have a hydrocracker, they kind of have an advantage. Anyway, uh, one thing about the hydrocracker though is it's really high pressure. That's why it's so expensive. Really high pressure. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it also takes a lot of hydrogen. You have to put hydrogen into it. So actually, I have that. That's another reason it's not a lot of people have them. Is not a lot of refineries have them. Is because it's yet I have a whole separate hydrogen unit in the middle of the to feed this guy. <clears throat> so if you look on your little sheet, it's kind of got a dashed line around it. That's just to show it's not that common. But anyway, if you see one, that's kind of where it fits in. So what's the ratio between gas oil and getting gasoline, or gas oil and getting diesel? Is it, can you get more of one or the other? From from the same amount of gas oil? You can... Depends what you've got downstream. Yeah, you can... It's it's pretty flexible. It's, it, I mean, it's like... As far as volume goes, you're going to give more volume of diesel because gasoline tends to be more dense, um, and you sell by volume, right? By gallon, you pay by the gallon. So you probably would end up with a little more diesel, but it sells for higher anyway. So, mm -hmm. all right. So I think, I think as far as braking processes, those are the main ones. The and, the, and these kind of work as buddies when they're when they're. When they're both in a refinery, you know, you got your gasoline, your diesel, you can optimize which one you want. Okay, so the next the next class of of units is is uh, <coughs> reconfiguring these molecules. So maybe you uh, you got a lot of let's say you got a lot of X's and O's, but you want more strings. So there's there, there's different processes you can use to well kind of we'll just rearrange the molecules and then we can get whatever product is most profitable. So we'll start with what's called a hydro treater. A hydro treater is kind of a it's kind of the garbage man of the the process unit. It cleans stuff up, which is nice. So they put them a lot of places, and it's not a very it's not a very Aggressive process like this with the high, high pressure, the coke <clears throat> the really high heat. It's pretty mild, and so because it cleans stuff up, it gets out the sulfur, it gets out the nitrogen, it gets out all these heavy metals. Um, uh, you, they end up putting them on the inlet to a lot of units. For example, they put a hydro treaters right here, where they <laughs> they take this gas oil and the bottoms and the stuff coming off the coker. It's got junk in it, and they don't want to corrupt their catalyst here, because because um, things like metals and sulfur, they tend to mess up catalyst. The catalyst is expensive. So uh, what's that? It's the liver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so anyway, they put them there. Uh, 
Hydro treaters take a little bit of hydrogen, not a whole lot. Yeah. I got a few here. So actually, they they also put hydro treaters. Um, I'm going to put a couple up here. And the diesel and jet fuel go through a hydro treater. The naphtha also goes through a hydro treater. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Yep. Yep. And uh, it just kind of increases the, the um, what do you call it, the octane number. You know, the number you see at the pumps. <coughs> It helps bring that up. Usually it's pretty low unless you process it. But also, if you hydro treat, like say your diesel right here, you hydro treat it, it makes it um, lower emissions, but it also decreases your miles per gallon. So there's a trade off. Mm -hmm. well, you get better, better emissions, but you don't get as much bang for your buck. And that just has to do with the way the molecules are bonded and rearranged. Do you put more, do they have multiple hydro treaters in a refinery? Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's there must be a small unit that they'll just place. Yeah, yeah. There's, in fact, there's usually diesel has its own hydro treater, just for diesel. Okay. And, and what's exactly happening inside the hydro treater? Um, it's, I mean, most of these processes in the hydro treater example, it looks like this. You've got the, it flows in, it goes through this, this vessel that's basically packed with catalyst, and it blows in, blows out the top, and goes on to uh, some kind of separation <coughs> unit or something like that, or or a heater. It's this hydro treater is just like a it's just like a big vessel full of beads or some kind of packing that that the oil flows through. And, and you're trying to get those metals and things to react out with the hydro. Yeah, yeah. So they. They like they stick to the catalyst, and eventually you want to. You have to get rid of your catalyst. So that's like your benzene and stuff in there, then, or is it? What do you mean? You're pulling out of that. You said decrease. Oh no! What? Power, is that? It, yeah, yeah. It it um. It saturates double bonds, which means that uh, it's like a rubber band. You know, you can pull a rubber band, and it's got a certain amount of power. But if you loop it around twice and pull it, it's got twice as much power because there's two bonds. Mm -hmm. What this does is it adds a little hydrogen and does what's called saturating those double bonds. You know like when you have, you see hydrogenated vegetable oil uh, in stuff. This is basically hydrogenating the oil. So it's the same process they would use to make kind of nasty hydrogenated vegetable oil, shortened and stuff. So you're, you're just rearranging your bonds uh -huh. over your exactly. carbon? Right. Thing yep. So when the ultra low sulfur diesel, is that when they the ultra when they put in those units for low sulfur, is that kind of what it is? The hydro treater, is that what? That is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. There's a little bit more they do to it, I think, but but that's the main thing to get the diesel, the, the sulfur out of the diesel. So then, in essence, low sulfur. That's why you get less power. Low sulfur, less power. Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah. So you get they they keep raising the emissions standards, you know, so you can have lower and lower impurities. But when they do that, it decreases the mileage, so you have to use more gas. Awesome. Anyway, what it is, I didn't write the rules. That's just dang environmentalists. No. Okay. So. Moving on from the diesel fanatics to the <coughs> gasoline affectionados, the next unit is a reformer. Um, put this right here. Alright, I'll put it right there. So reformer, I'll call it since we're since we're doing this whole uh, <coughs> analogy thing, it's the it's the brewmaster. This is the, this is the one that it makes the stuff you want to fill your tank with. It's the premium grade gasoline. So we'll take the naphtha. It takes naphtha, which is the heavy raw gas, and you put it through a reformer, and out comes. They call it reformate. Because yeah. they're really original. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because they're engineers. <laughs> <laughs> We'll call, it, we'll call it premium gas. 
that's what the market would call it. Yeah. All right. So this makes about 40% um, of the gasoline used in the U.S. is the reformer. So it's a pretty it's a pretty big process. I mean, as far as importance goes. Um, it's a, and it's also a pretty simple process. It looks kind of like that. <laughs> Just stuff flows through this pack bed of catalyst and goes out the other side. Actually, with the reformer, the, the chemistry is, is insane what's going on in there. There's like multiple reactions and, and things. But uh, anyway, when, we're, when you're looking at it, it's pretty simple. So we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, the, last, the last kind of unit that's used to just rearrange molecules, and if you see, we're moving our way up, right? The last unit is called an isomerization unit. And uh, please refer to the spelling uh, on the graph below and not on the um, boxes above because you may notice that it is misspelled. <laughs> That's not a word I know how to spell, so you're okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Isomerization unit takes the straight grain gasoline and just kind of, you know, just improves the octane a little bit. You know, makes that numbers up. So it basically just does this. It takes, it finds some a little, some some straight straight chains and makes them into crosses and double crosses. That's basically what it does. So. We've talked about gasoline being X's and O's, right? Well, the more X's and O's you have, the better the gasoline. So it finds the straight molecules and makes them into X's. Isomers. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it as far as um, reconfiguring the units that reconfigure the molecules. So now let's talk about the stuff that um, that break that that combines things. So these. These processes break stuff apart, these processes just reconfigure stuff, but you got all these light ends up here that look like dots and little short lines, and that's not going to sell for very much. You can only sell so much, you know, natural gas and stuff like that. So uh, they want to do something with this to make a little bit more of the valuable products. The first, um, first unit we'll talk about is the the catalytic polymerization unit, or cat poly. Um, oh, How many different types of catalysts does this hold? Yeah, each one's different. How many Most are, are there so for oh, each there's unit? There's, um, there's, well, there's a different, different kind for each unit, but even each unit, like, you can pay a little more for a better catalyst, or you can you can kind of implant it on different objects to get better yield. I mean, there's catalyst technology just by itself is like a whole industry that they do a lot of research in. So it's uh, hundreds of different types of catalysts. Yeah, hundreds of different types of catalysts that you could estimate. Okay. <coughs> okay, this is the cat poly unit. The uh, so this uh, the, the cat poly unit is um, it uh, it basically just makes gasoline. So this is I mean this is gasoline, but it's, I, I guess actually this would be better to call it naphtha here. And call this gasoline. That's probably uh, more accurate. I think that's how it is in the chart, right? It doesn't say. Okay. Okay. 